This week I'm going to take you through a real-time demo of my portrait painting of the Irish actress Nicola Coughlin who starred in Bridgerton and in Derry Girls for week one of season three of Sky Arts Portrait Artist of the Week. So today I'm using some Dalla Rowney mixed media paper. Uh, this is A2 which is around about 23 inches by 16 and a half inches. And I've just put down a base layer of conventional acrylic. So I mixed up this orange using some uh, cadmium yellow by Winsor & Newton and then some System 3 cadmium red in roughly equal proportions and then approximately 10 times the amount of white compared to the other colours. And that gave me this nice pale mid-tone which is going to which is, you know, sealed the paper for me and now I'm ready to paint. And, but before I get to that I'll put you on time lapse and I'm going to just draw in the draw in the, uh, the face using some watercolour markers. So I'm going to start out with some orange and yellow. Not sure how they'll show up on the on this pale background, but we'll see how it goes. So you can see that um, I started out with fairly broad line work with the orange marker. I was using the brush tip there on the watercolour marker, but when I went for my correction lines, so I typically do two drawings, one on top of the other. So that in this case, the orange was the first stab and then the, the blue lines are the correction. So, for example, you can see I've corrected the shape and position of this eye quite considerably and the same with the mouth here. And in this case, I used the fine line uh, nib of the marker pen. And the reason is sometimes when I'm painting, this watercolor marker will will run a little bit. And I found that the dark blue, this is a, this is a peacock blue, so it's a mid blue, but it can run into the, the paint and it can kind of distort the color a little bit. Anyway, as I said, I used conventional acrylic for the background. I'm going to put some interactive acrylic, just a mixture of ultramarine blue and a little bit of alizarin crimson and some titanium white just to give me a pale purple to block in the background. I'll time lapse that and then the rest of the video will be real time. Well, I changed my mind a little bit and um, I actually used uh, silurian blue, alizarin crimson and tinting white and the tinting white gives a slight iridescence and is a little more translucent than titanium white. And while I've got that on my palette, I'm going to continue to use this one inch wide or um, flat synthetic brush. And I'm just mixing in all of the tinting white I've got left on my palette into the color I still had on my brush at the time. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use that to block in a base layer for the dress. OK, so in my composition, we're not going to see very much of the dress at all. But um, I can just use this colour to, you know, really quite quickly. Just lighten that area. Now, it's not as light as the highlights will be later on, but nevertheless, you know, it's just better than having that warm background for the dress area. OK, so what I'm going to do now is clean my palette and then mix up um, some paint for the face. Well, having used Silurian Blue for part of the background you know, in, in the mix there, I thought I'd refresh my palette with my tinting white Silurian Blue. In recent portraits, I've used Ultramarine, but I thought I'd go with the Silurian, the usual Alizarin and Cadmium Yellow Light. So what I need to do now is mix up a tone or a, and a colour which is appropriate for kind of a middle tone for the skin. So let's um, grab some of the tinting white 
same brush as I use for the background, the one inch wide, uh, synthetic, flat. So we've got uh, plenty of tinting white there. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of the yellow, mix that in fairly thoroughly. A little bit more, get that thoroughly mixed in. And then just the slightest little corner of the alizarin, because that's quite a powerful colour, so you don't need very much of it. And, and that's probably a good place to start, I hope. We'll see how that goes on. Obviously, I've got this warm background, so that's going to affect things. Just going to spray the paint in the palette with a little, little bit of water, just to keep things fairly fluid. And then I'm going to start here just above the eye on our right. Let's just reduce the amount of paint I've got on the brush there. And, and that's not too bad a starting, starting place. So I took a little bit of care with my sketch, so I want to preserve that as best I can. And the sitter today has you know really quite smooth skin so i want to capture something of that but at the same time i don't want to completely you know ignore the kind of power or the um the qualities that you know having some expressive brush marks can give to your painting so i'm going to keep things reasonably smooth as i apply the paint as i apply the paint but i'm still being mindful of the direction in which i Put the, the brush stroke down. And although I'm trusting my sketch a reasonable amount, I am checking repeatedly as I apply this uh, first layer that I've got my drawing reasonably correct. Now the forehead and the lighting in my reference is, you know, it's pretty pale across its entirety. There are some areas of mild shadow and mild highlight, but for now I'm content to leave that as a single region of tone. However, when I move to areas like the cheek and around the eye, the shadows are a little bit deeper in places. So where, where that's the case, I'm going to leave that under layer exposed because I'll come back in in a moment with a, a darker tone to, to help model that area and make things look more three-dimensional. Now using the tinting white means that some of the underlying drawing, both the orange watercolour marker and the blue watercolour marker, is showing through. And in addition, some of the warm undercoat of acrylic is showing through as well. And that's fine from my point of view. Very happy for part of the kind of early stages of the painting to be seen in the finished image.
OK, so what I can do now is take this colour I still have on the palette, still got plenty left. I'm going to add a little bit more of the alizarin, but mix that in again fairly thoroughly. I'm going to spray the surface.